Uh, good afternoon. Thank you for attending uh, today's press conference. I'm joined here by many colleagues in the legislature on both sides of the aisle. We're very concerned what's going on in America, and we're very concerned what's going on in New Jersey and at our airports. We're opposing the new TSA security procedures as folks show up at the airport. We believe that there are constitutional violations that are taking place. We believe that there are violations of New Jersey law that are taking place. When you go to the airport, contrary to what TSA supervisors are saying, when you buy an airline ticket, you do not give up your constitutional rights. And we are standing here today to say that American citizens should be able to travel freely without being harassed and intimidated by their government, that there's other procedures that can be used, and there's other countries around the world providing clear role models of how to do this. We see government action that's continuing to intimidate our citizens and violate their rights, and enough is enough. We are introducing resolutions today both in the Senate and in the Assembly calling on our federal congressional delegation to immediately get engaged in this issue, to take a look at these new TSA security procedures, and to stand up for our citizens, not only in New Jersey, but across the United States of America. Thank you. I'm going to speak specifically about the radiation and the danger that it may uh, represent for some people. Those of us who have been through cancer therapies and who still continue to have massive amounts of radiation for one reason or another, PET scans and so on, have been told by our doctors that we should not have any other radiation unless it's absolutely necessary. I question whether this radiation of these scans are absolutely necessary. I travel a lot, and it means going through them often. We all know that radiation can cause through free radicals an interruption with our chromosomes and genes. There's no question about that. And scientists realize that even small amounts can be an issue. A number of scientists have said that they're very concerned about this. This backscatter X-ray technology, which is one of the two technologies that are being used in these uh, scanners, uh, is the one that's the primary concern. A team of researchers from the University of California at San Francisco are urging independent um, research to find out just how much actually will uh, affect people. And the big problem is women who are prone to breast cancer, it's children, and uh, anybody who has had a lot of radiation or those who travel a lot, and certainly pilots are among this group um, that are concerned and, and I believe should be. Uh, David Brenner, who's the director of the Center for Radiological Research at Columbia University and a professor of radiation biophysics, says that it's a small amount of radiation, but when you see the large numbers of people that are going to be put through these things, he said, there will be cancers that result. Well, we have to decide whether that is worth it for the people of this country. It's not worth it for me. I don't intend to use those. And then what's my option? My option is to go through this unbelievable pat down where people are really having themselves violated. I can't even imagine having, putting a child through these kinds of pat downs. I can't imagine somebody uh, whose religion requires particular modesty to have to go through these pat downs. I don't think there's an option, and I think there will be people who will choose to not fly because of it. I intend to continue, and I'm going to fight these things. I don't know how we're going to do it, but this resolution, this group of resolutions, um, certainly is a first step, and I think Americans deserve better. Uh, thank you, Senator Allen. Uh, I, I wanted to note that we're joined by people across the broad spectrum. Uh, we have uh, people on the left, people on the right, Republicans, Democrats. We're just joined by Assemblywoman Valerie Veneri Huddle. And uh, this is not about left, right. This is about up with freedom or down with uh, government tyranny. And our next speaker is the executive director of the American Civil Liberties Union for New Jersey, Deborah Jacobs. Deborah. 
Thank you. I was so uh, thrilled to be invited to participate in this issue. This is a concern that the ACLU has um, been fighting nationwide for many years since September 11th, just how we manage our uh, airport security and whether the uh, intrusions on privacy that we experience on balance um, are a positive when you weigh them against whether the measures are really keeping us safer or just making us maybe feel safer. In this case, I don't think anyone feels safer at the prospect of going through one of these machines. It involves a striking and direct invasion of privacy. It produces a graphic image of passengers' bodies, essentially taking a naked picture of air passengers as they pass through checkpoints. It's a virtual strip search that reveals not only your private parts, but can also reveal intimate medical details like uh, colonostomy bags and that kind of thing. The likely effectiveness of these technologies in preventing attacks doesn't justify the level of intrusion involved. It's far from clear that body, body scanners would have detected the uh, anatomically congruent explosives that um, the would-be terrorist Umar Farouk Abdul Mutulab uh, did in December 2009, the underwear bomber, right? Long name for underwear bomber. But um, he, um, he not only might not have been detected, but um, terrorists, you know, terrorism is a dynamic threat. It, it changes. Terrorists react and adapt to security measures. And if they believe that everybody's going to go through a body scanner, then they can start putting explosives in body cavities, which it will not detect. And we know they are willing and capable of doing those kinds of measures because this is, these are suicide bombers. I'm thrilled that New Jersey's legislators are taking the lead on this issue, and I hope that legislators in other states are also going to pass resolutions so that it sends a, a one voice kind of message to the federal government that enough's enough, you know, um, I think every American knows that security is never absolute and never will be. What we have to do is deal with both political and basic security measures that will help us lead to, um, to a, a more peaceful society and have the least invasion of privacy and, and the least invasion on our constitutional rights. So the ACLU is proud to stand with these progressive legislators. That's progressive with a small P. <laughs> small P. <laughs> Um, because they're standing up for our constitutional rights and it's a voice that needs to be heard and I think, you know, I have a flight booked right now to Las Vegas in about a month. I'm terrified to go through this experience. Uh, um, one last thing I want to mention is that um, in England where they've um, spent about a third of all law enforcement budget on video surveillance, there's study after study after study that shows that those who observe the surveillance uh, are tracked to look at pretty girls, special parts. And to use those kinds of um, technologies to essentially violate women's privacy or children's or boys or whoever we might be looking at, the same danger exists here. And that's something we should be aware of. It's been absolutely consistent in the test. And some jurisdictions have even stopped using these technologies. So thank you again. As you heard from the ACLU, uh, England repeal these machines after four years. Um, you know, you have young children going through these machines. You have pregnant women if they opt out, obviously, which I would hope that they would. Of course, then they're subject to, to search down. Um, we're not talking about limiting security. We're talking about using security wisely. Nothing is foolproof. Believe me, I know that, you know, these terrorists are, um, you know, going to get around anything they can. But we need to make sure that we are not putting our children at risk by putting them through these machines. We're not putting uh, people with health issues, pregnant women. And I plan to write a letter to the TSA. Also, my concern is the screening process of the opt-out. If you have a child that goes through this, you could be causing trauma to that child. You also, I wonder, are these TSA agents, uh, you know, cleared on a psychological evaluation? And, you know, what do they go through in terms of um, their clearances in, in being approved to do this? So there are many, many unanswered questions in addition to the radiation. And I really feel that these uh, two resolutions, which I have signed on to support, 
um, will bring attention to this. And New Jersey is often in the forefront of issues, and I'm thrilled that we are standing up to the federal government and questioning uh, this new procedure. Everybody has seen that video of the young girl that was traveling with her parents, and the girl was saying repeatedly, do not touch me, do not touch me. This child did not consent to that touch. This child never waived her rights. And there sat the parents, bewildered, what can I do, as the child was being touched in very inappropriate ways that if it occurred in another setting, somebody's going to jail. So we have plenty of laws on the books that prevent unconsented touching, that prevent unconsented touching in a sexual way. And we have parents that are telling their children, don't let anybody touch you in this way, yet when we go to the airport, forget about that. And I just think it's wrong, especially when there's so many other examples around the world of other countries that do it differently where we don't have to have these invasive procedures. And depending on how the images are um, stored and viewed, that you know, it could implicate uh, pornography or child pornography laws. And just the idea in this world where we're combating uh, so much around the naked images of children to sort of create a for unnecessarily, I think that's a key, unnecessarily create a forum like that. The ACLU's recommendation is that these machines not be used as a widespread tool at all, but rather be offered when someone, when their um, suspicion raises to the, uh, rises to the level of probable cause and the person could uh, be subject to a strip search then this could be an alternative, a less invasive alternative to the strip search. That's the right use of this machine, and that's the only right use of this machine. Right. This is about up with American freedom. The Western world has been an open society, and we're seeing it right before our eyes become a prison camp. Mm -hmm. It needs to stop. And this is not about Democrat or Republican. This is about standing up for our Constitution and our traditional values. And I would hope our elected officials, and I'm confident they will, will see what's going on here and around the country and they'll respond appropriately.